Once again, Hohandit South Africa, Otsi Hilijang Botswana, Servus Österreich, Grüß Gott, Ban, Bienvenu, Benvenuti, Salve, welcome back to the program, folks. Sawabona, KZN, this is Chris live in central Pennsylvania, but not in the studio, but on the road once again. Oh, it's warm in here already. I can feel it. Gonna have to try to uh, put this window down, but it's, that's what I hate about electronics. If it's all electronic. There we go. Hopefully and that'll Patriot keep. First conservative, second Republican, third, and working every single day to make this uh, the most popular program. Come on, shut up. Because it's based on one thing and one thing only. And that is... Can't turn the car off now. Oh, I don't want to run. Oh, there we go. There we go. Sorry about that, folks. Just trying to get... It's a problem with electric windows. Oh, you go, well, electric windows, you know, ABS, uh, power steering, autonomous driving. It's all a bunch of crap, folks. It works when it works. The big red button. Now, if the big red button is the nuclear button. If I had pushed that, there would have been an explosion. You would have lost the connection instantaneously. Whoa, it's warm in here. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be enough. I might have to just open the door up and get some air in here. Whoo, baby. Anyway, um, yeah, that bright, shiny, flaming ball of gas is back. No, not Joe Biden, but the sun has made a reappearance here in central Pennsylvania. Uh, Noah is gone. The giraffe, the elephant, the lion have all moved on somewhere downstream as we're back. I'm going to get my glasses. I'm going to need that for reading here shortly. Let me see. Uh, have a jacket here. Anyway, welcome back to the program, folks. It is a pleasure. Today, we're going to talk an awful lot about the former Speaker of Parliament, No Sezivwe Mapisa Nak. We're going to talk about her, the former member or the Speaker of the Parliament who has resigned and turned herself in for arrest today in South Africa. It is exciting stuff, but I'll tell you what, don't get too excited. The ANC is just covering their backside. They don't really care about South Africans. Don't kid yourself. Now, this is why the ANC are pursuing her, because as they said this morning, we cannot afford to defend her in an election year, said an ANC member of Parliament. Nusa Zivwe Mapisa Nakula resigned yesterday after a bid to block her arrest was squashed by the court. She faces corruption charges linked to bribes she allegedly received during her time as the defense minister. Now, African National Congress leaders close to cooperation accused uh, speaker encouraged her to resign to save the party embarrassment of defending her during a pending motion of no confidence. Yeah, so they didn't get a chance to have a motion of no confidence. She resigned. How about a resignation from Minir Palapala? That's one Sir Ramaphosa. $580,000 in cold, hard United States cash. No customs declaration, no currency declaration, no bank transaction. Cash carried in surreptitiously on a plane and delivered to his Palapala estate. Ostensibly to purchase bulls and they were never delivered. They're still at the estate, the ranch. So what's going on there? Minir Palapala escaping justice. That's right. But uh, no Sivwe is not escaping justice. Well, is she innocent? She proclaims her innocence. Let's talk about that. So she conceded yesterday after efforts to block her arrest on graft charges after they proved futile. She stands accused of receiving more than 2.3 million rand in bribes from a defense contractor who herself is also implicated in a 100 million rand fraud case. So, you know, I think she thinks she might be able to get away with this because the person that's accused her is also accused of fraud. So who are you going to believe? So, I mean, it's a fair question. But there's more to the story than just that. We said she cannot put us in that position. We cannot afford to defend her in an election year. She must just resign and make it easier for the ANC. an ANC MP and a top leader with him in national, the, the, uh, the ANC party. They told News 24. My resignation is in no way an indication or admission of guilt regarding the allegations being leveled against me, said Nosezivwe Mapisa Nakula. So she proclaims her innocence and that her resignation is no admission of guilt. And in fact, maybe it isn't. She said, I made this decision in order to uphold the integrity and sanctity of our parliament, an apex institution of our system of government, representing the people of South Africa as a whole. Now, the problem I have with that statement is that she was the Speaker of Parliament and took no action, convened no committee, tabled no motions to censure or vote no confidence for Cyril Ramaphosa for the Pala Pala incident. So she really doesn't care about the integrity of the institution or of her party. That's just lip service and typical politician speak. Because she cared she would have taken action against Cyril Ramaphosa. But of course, he's the gangster boss, the top don of their crime family known as the African National Congress. 
In a short statement, the African National Congress spokesperson Mahalengi Bengu Motsiri said Mapisi Nakula highlighted her intention to protect the reputation of the ANC, which she has served for three decades. Ooh, so well done. So well done. We value her commitment to maintaining the image of our organization <laughs> as it reflects our principles of organizational renewal that promote proactive responsibility, taking among the members rather than waiting for instructions to step aside. Well, nobody's done a step aside in the step aside rule. They've all stayed in government. Who has stepped aside under the step aside rule? Ace Magashule? Maybe, I don't know. Zandile Gumeda? Zuelim Kizi? No. So Ramaphosa, none of these clouds have stepped aside, except for maybe Ace. Ace is the place that's been vacated from the high echelons of ANC power in South Africa. As the African National Congress caucus, we wish to thank Comrade Nosesivwe Mapisa Nakula for her role in serving the South African people since she was deployed by the ANC, deployed as if she's a soldier, in 1994 as a member of parliament executive. This leech, this suckling little turd on the taxpayer has been in office since 1994, accomplishing nothing whatsoever other than securing a paycheck and defrauding South Africans of their hard-won multi-party capital-based democracy. That's all she's done. And they thank her for that. Yes, because she's just a get-along, go-along, another clown. Yeah. Okay. Yep. The ANC caucus also confer affirms that Comrade Nosesivwe's assertion that her resignation is not a mission of guilt of the allegations against her. We respect her decision to resign in order to preserve and protect the integrity of Parliament. How about Zwei Lim Kizi resign from Parliament? How about Becca Chile resign from Parliament? How about Ronnie Lamola resign from Parliament? And don't forget Jabba the Hutt. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you know her, Na Lady Pandor. And let's just get to the heart of the matter. Sura Ramaphosa, Minir Palapala. For those who don't speak off our cons, Meneer is Mr. Mr. Palapala. That's right. How about you resign as well for the integrity and the good of Parliament and the country? That would work really well. Well, yeah. Yeah. The ANC will, caucus will be forever grateful for her role in the National Assembly. <laughs> in her relatively brief tenure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. Thanks for sharing. Nearly a month after the investigating directorate first told Nosesive Makpisa Nakula she needed to appear in court to face corruption charges, the recently resigned National Assembly Speaker finally handed herself over to authorities today. She was voluntarily surrendering herself. Former Speaker arrived at the police station and handed herself over early this morning to officials in the investigating directorate at the Littleton Police Station in Centurion. I know where that's at. I've been there. Not the police station, but Centurion and Littleton. Yeah, so she turned herself in. Now, the National Prosecuting Authority rejects her claim that her corruption case is politically motivated. The investigating directorate says uh, National Assembly Speaker, former National Assembly Speaker, Nosesivwe Mapisa Nakula, appears to be only want to be charged with corruption after the 29 May elections and has denied her claims it wants to do so to trigger the ANC step aside rule. <laughs> Handbags, wigs, and a missing bearskin. A bearskin? We didn't have bears in South Africa. What do we know about the investigating directorate's case against Mapisa Nakula? The ID's corruption case against her appears to rest on a defense contractor who says she bribed her with 2.5 million rand and is herself accused of a tender fraud totaling 100 million rand. But that's not it, folks. That's not it. The state is also adamant that it has a strong case against her, which it does, it says, does not rely on the testimony of defense contractor turned state witness, Nombasa. Sondwa Lovo, who herself faces that 100 million tender fraud case that was struck from the roll less than two weeks before the ID contract conducted a seizure in operation at the former speaker's home. So that person is no longer even under investigation. So she, so that's interesting. Uh, besides the whistleblower's affidavit, there's ample independent evidence that corroborates the witness who allegedly gave the gratifications to Mapisa Nakula. Manyati has stated in court papers before adding the state had recovered a wig relevant to its case during the search and seizure operation. INC criminals are just so funny. They are so absolutely ridiculous. So the total amount in cash was given to her was 2.55 million, excuse me, yeah, a million rand. Uh, before he added that she had allegedly asked for an additional 2 million, but that was not part of the witness. <laughs> not, part, part not paid by the witness. So she got 2.55 million rand. She demanded another 2 million rand and got a wig on top of it. Yeah, but she's innocent. Well, maybe she's innocent. Innocent until proven guilty. 
Unless you're a conservative in America, then you're guilty by just mere look. Mapisa Nakula's resignation, uh, we cannot afford to defend her, the ANC said. Yep, yep. Now, according to the state, between December 2016 and July of 2019, she formed a corrupt relationship with Lovu and Lovu upon receipt of various payments made to Unkombe by the Department of Defense, made several payments to Nakula amounting to 2,150,000 Rand. So she was supposed to get 2,550,000 Rand. She wanted 2 million more. She actually got 2,150,000 according to the state. And it was a funneling operation. They, they laundered that money through a third person to get to her, according to the state. As a result, 12 offenses were committed by Nakula in terms of the Prevention and Combating of Corrupt Activities Act, 12 of 2004, or PRECA, an act that the ANC literally takes for granted. They don't ever prosecute people for this. The ID further alleges that Nlovo, in addition, gave a Ted Baker handbag and a Sarap bag to Nakula. So there are two bags. Mm. Yep. It claims that the then minister used some of the bribes paid to her to fund renovations to her home in Joburg. In a somewhat cryptic statement, its application for war to search her house, the ID states, a brown bearskin with claws was alleged to have been brought into the Republic of South Africa illegally by Nakula and will have to be subjected to further investigation upon seizure thereof. <laughs> they got a warrant to take a bearskin out of her house because she brought it in illegally. Hey, how about a warrant to take the money away from Cyril Ramaphosa, the $580,000? That has yet been declared on any taxes. Oh, by the way, have everybody forgotten that the South African Police Service responsible for VIP protection details and lied in its annual report claiming not a single one of the, what, 43 residences that they're responsible for providing 24-hour security for, not a single one had an incident, a theft or invasion or anything at all in the time frame when the folks stole Muneer Palapala's stash of cash in the mattress. That's right. So Saps is negligent. Saps is complicit. Saps is part of the problem, along with Sir Raposa, who perverted the means of justice by misusing the police to cover up the crime and then hunt down the suspects and try to involve Namibian authorities on top of it. None of that's come to light. None of it's being discussed. Sir Ramaphosa getting a free pass. The man belongs in escort, along with his buddy, Jacob Zuma. Now, according to Mapisa Nakula, the police never found the bearskin, nor did they recover the bags or large amounts of cash they're looking for. Well, duh, if she used the money to renovate her house in Joburg, she probably don't have the money anymore. They did, she said, see certain receipts in my husband's study, which I share, which my husband believes related to the purchase of his best recollection, house maintenance projects. Yeah, of course, between 2016 and 2019, that's what they were going for, the receipts for the renovation. And when your husband can't prove the source of income and you can't prove from your salary, you're going down, assuming you did it. <laughs> she does deserve the presumption of innocence. Or so that's how it goes, the story. Anyway. In her affidavit, she says she elects to remain silent and will say her defense at the right time. Well, she's entitled to that. I believe in South Africa, you have the right to remain silent to avoid self-incrimination. That's fair. Yep. Hey, look, uh, advice to uh, no, no, no statement, no poly, no waiver. Don't take a statement. Don't answer their questions. Don't invoke your right to self-defense uh, against self-incrimination. Don't um, take a polygraph and don't waive your rights. Yeah, that's my recommendation to her. If she's innocent, that's a smart move because it sure looks like they got enough stuff to make her look guilty. Well, she says that her past behavior shows that I don't have a propensity to commit crime. <laughs> Lady, you're in the African National Congress. That alone means you're capable of committing crime. Look, it's a gangster operation run by the big Don himself. It's unbelievable what the ANC has stolen from the people of South Africa, their liberty, their freedom, their wealth, their national treasure. It's unbelievable. So I'm not accusing her. I'm just saying your mere affiliation with the ANC, with so many criminals in the ANC, it makes it difficult to believe that, um, you know, your past behavior. Uh, Perhaps if you are a criminal, no one ever discovered it before. I'm not saying she's a criminal. Anyway, so that argument, uh, I, I understand she's defending herself, but hey. All right. Now, she has, oh, the lights went off. That's good. She uh, also said that um, she'll suffer serious physical harm if she's forced to remain in prison pending her trial. So she made a bid for bail. What serious physical harm? They have doctors and escorts, a lovely facility. Go down there to KZN. Now, she instructed her lawyers to place on record that she suffers from hypertension. Well, you and 70% of other over 50 black women in South Africa, it's not an uncommon affliction. That's an exaggeration on percentage, but a high percentage of women, particularly obese women, suffer from hypertension. 
and black folks in general tend to suffer from higher rates of hypertension than Anglo-Saxon origin people. I don't know if it's diet or exercise, lifestyles, or it's a genetic propensity, but it is the truth. Um, that's one reason why Social Security is so insidious in America. A lot of black men die before they ever reach the age where they can collect Social Security. Shame. Anyway. She says the wig that the state seized from her home was one of many that she has and questions why this wig was taken. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'd like to know, too. Why'd they take that wig? <laughs> she strongly denies that she has sought to evade justice by launching multiple legal challenges to the case against her, which she contends is malicious and politically motivated. Motivated by whom? The DA? The Freedom From Plus? The IFP? UIM? Patriotic Alliance? Who's it motivated by? By the ANC? Why would the ANC want to get rid of you? You are a devoted cater who does what she's told, accomplishes nothing, and sits in government occupying space that should go to someone compare, concerned about good governance. Why would they target you? Please give us some indication of why that might be the case and make it believable. Now, if you're a conservative in America and running for office, we'd know why you're being targeted. Because the, the, the media, the intelligence apparatus, the bureaucracy, the elected officials all go against patriotic Americans. So, I mean, it would be plausible here, but not there. The ANC controls everything. You're an ANC loyal member. Why would they go against it? She also says the state's case relies on a single witness. Well, not according to the state. They have forensic evidence that corroborates what the witness told them. So they can prove it without the witness. The witness just adds to it, according to the state. She says the timing is questionable. How is it questionable? How's the question? Because there's an election now? <laughs> Maybe. All right. So she does proclaim her innocence. We will see if Nosisibwe, Mapisa Nakula, is in fact innocent when a trial is held. Well, Polakani residents threaten to shut down the city amid ongoing service delivery issues. Residents of Petersburg, or Polakwani, also Shishago and surrounding areas, have threatened to shut down the Limpopo capital today. Now, whether they did or not, I don't know. I haven't seen any updates, but they did threaten to shut it down. The Polokwane uh, municipal, municipality warned today is a regular working day amid social media posts calling for residents to join a march to force the municipality to deliver basic services. The call comes as several Polokwane townships are experiencing a water shortage. In a notice to its website, the municipality said that it would be on high alert against anticipated disruptions today. Polokwane municipality has not approved any marches or shutdowns as no applications were received from protesters. As a result, Thursday is a regular working day. All roads and businesses, including shopping centers and schools, are expected to operate during the normal operating hours. Law enforcement will be on high alert to ensure uninterrupted operations. Police in the province will also warn against dissemination of threats regarding potential shutdowns on social media platforms. Remember the story I told you about yesterday, folks? About Curio, the school, excuse me. <coughs> <clears throat> they were accused of being racist because of a photograph that appeared of a young girl who was black, who was working behind a cash a ca a cash register, and a young girl who was pretending to purchase something as part of a career day. I told you that it was ludicrous, it was asinine, it was simply race hustling, and it's not racist in any way whatsoever. In fact, the people that assumed that young black girl working as a cashier is some sort of stereotype that's negative are in fact themselves the racist. So, an update on that situation. Curio Holdings is cleared, or they clear the air, after racist advert campaign. An internal investigation to the recent Curio marketing campaign has revealed that the images used on social media were taken from a recent excursion and parents were approached for consent prior to the images being posted. Curio Holdings came under fire this week over an advert that went viral showing a black child employed as a cashier while a white child was employed as a veterinarian. And apparently that hurt their feelings. Curio's portfolio manager of special projects, Melanie Fortune Dur, said the investigations has so far established that images of the children were part of an excursion by learners at the Curio School in the Western Cape. They originated from a visit to an activity center in which children all had an opportunity to play alternate roles, each, including that of cashier, a veterinarian, and a banker. The images were used with consent of the parents in terms of our existing policies and the relevant school community did not take offense to the posting on his community page. No, just the race hustling black supremacists took exception to it, trying to denigrate the work of those who work at cashiers. Fortune Durer added that the mother of the child portrayed as a cashier said her daughter was not stereotyped in any way and also had an opportunity to play 
all of the roles. Her daughter had an opportunity to be the vet, to be the banker, and to be the cashier. That photo just happened to show her as a cashier. And the racist black supremacists and leftist hate-wanking liberals ran around and claimed it was racist because they are racist. That's all they think of. They look at people and they see skin color. They see nothing else. They don't see the merit. They don't see the content of one's character. They do not see the accomplishments or the failures of the individual. They simply see skin color. And they apply that prism to every instance of life. These people must be removed from public office, at the ballot box, or by impeachment, whatever means is necessary. And these people in the social media world who are these race hustlers must be ignored. Do not give them oxygen. They are sick, twisted, bigoted, race, bigoted racist. And that's what they are. Whether they're black or white, they're clearly racist. The mother said her daughter's teacher also shared pictures with her where she could see the fun her daughter was having. Her daughter specifically enjoyed the role of cashier. The mother is unhappy that the public interpretation of the picture of her daughter is out of this context and is being used divisively. Now, that's the reality. The black mother had no problem with her child who had a good time playing the role of cashier. But apparently the race hustlers did have a problem. So, the president of Botswana, uh, Mkwetsi, Eric Masisi, has lost his mind again. Marbles Masisi. That's what I'm going to start calling him. Marbles Masisi. Eric Masisi now is echoing the comments of his environmental minister who threatened to dump elephants in Hyde Park, 10,000 elephants in Hyde Park. Now he's up the ante. Eric Masisi is saying that the president must want to threaten to send 20,000 elephants to Germany. How? You've got three what three C one thirties and they can't fly above ten thousand feet. So I gonna take elephants to Germany. He's being a smart ass. According to France twenty four, his comments came in response to the German government's suggestion that there should be stricter limits on importing hunting trophies. President Makwetse Eric Masisi assured his threat was no joke. Yeah, okay, no joke. Well, if you were joking, people would accept it. But you're saying it's no joke, it just proves what an ass you are, because you have no capability to deliver a single elephant to I mean, Airbus One can't do it. How are you going to get them there? By sea? You don't have a port. By rail? <laughs> Angered by proposals in Berlin, Masisi said Germans should try living among elephants. He claimed an explosion of the number of mammals roaming his country has produced a plague. Well, the elephants could claim the same thing. An explosion of the number of homo sapiens in the territory of Botswana in the past 60 years is what's causing the problem. Botswana's population, when it became a country in 1966 was just a little over half a million. Today, it's 2.3 million people. Maybe there's too many people in Botswana. There's certainly too many people in America, 330 million, and India and China, way too many people. And, you know, if we took the leftists out of the equation in the UK, it'd be a much smaller country too. <laughs> uh, the MTA, that's the Metropolitan Transit Authority, demands the New York City Marathon cough up $750,000 in tolls for crossing the Verrazano Bridge in the latest money-grubbing scheme. The MTA is making Mad Dash for cast the latest target, runners for crossing the Ven uh, Verrazano Narrows Bridge, which is a ridiculous bridge. I think it costs like $25 toll to go one way over this bridge. It's ridiculous. That's why I don't use JFK Airport anymore, because I have to go over that bridge. The transit agency is waging war against the organizers of the New York City Marathon, a world-famous marathon like the Boston Marathon, demanding $750,000 to make up for toll revenue lost for shutting down the span during the world-famous race. But they don't lose revenue. Listen to how much this revenue is brought to the city. And if New York Roadrunners don't pay up, the New York Roadrunners, that's the people who host this thing, don't pay up, it's threatening to restrict use of the bridge, which could reduce the number of runners who can compete. So they want to undermine this world-famous event to grub for a little money. Now, negotiations have been underway for months over the New York City Marathon, a major event that attracts 50,000 runners and generates more than $425 million in revenue for the city of New York. And these parochial little turds want $750,000 for the Verrazano Bridge to pay for the 50,000 people who run across the bridge. Hmm. I think that's pretty ridiculous, don't you? The thing raises $425 million for the city of New York. But the bridge authority wants to impose a tariff, a toll. <laughs> now, the marathon made even made additional $1.1 million for the transit authority with record high ridership on race day last year. So the MTA is controlling the bridge and the subway, right? The subway in New York. So because extra people were in the city and up the number of riders on the transit system, primarily the subway, but also buses, 
the transit authority made an additional $1.1 million as a consequence of the race. Now these scumbags want to suck $750,000 out of the nonprofit organization that organizes the New York City Marathon. This is what happens. Corrupt power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. That is what Lord Acton said and he was 100% correct. This is an abuse, an abuse of authority. What a bunch of clowns they are. $425 million in revenue plus another $1.1 million directly to the transit authority and the scumbags want additional money. Give me a break. There's nothing like a Marathon Sunday to show that New York City's comeback is alive and well, said MTA CEO Yano Lieber, enthused in a statement last November, noting that he personally rode the train five times in order to watch his daughter run the marathon. Yet his organization is trying to fleece and money grub from the races. Taxpayers cannot be expected to subsidize a wealthy, non-government organization like the New York Roadrunners to the tune of $750,000, said the president of MTA Bridges and Tunnels, Catherine Sheridan, in a statement. Well, Catherine... So let's not hold the New York City Marathon. So you get your $750,000, you won't get it. The city won't take in $425 million in revenue from people coming in. And the Transit Authority, which you're a part of, will not get an additional extra $1.1 million in revenue generated by ridership on the day. So go ahead, cut your nose off to spite your face, your typical government bureaucrat. Wow. The MTA is prepared to continue working towards a final agreement with the New York Roadrunners, provided it leads over time to full reimbursement of the lost revenue. You've got more than full reimbursement. You got 1.1 million and you're claiming a loss of 750,000. How about you pay the New York Roadrunners the difference of $350,000, Ms. Sheridan? Critics slammed the MTA for giving the marathon run, a run for its money when the system lost 690 million to fare and toll evasion in 2022 with 46 million in toll dodging on bridges and tunnels alone. So, so they're not even collecting money from the people using this system to the tune of almost $700 million and they want to grub from a nonprofit. Wow. Wow. Anti-Israeli squad member Jamal Brown, Bowman of New York. You know him? You know him? <laughs> That's uh, Sparky. Sparky Jamal Bowman. You know him, Mr. Fire Alarm. Far left squad member Jamal Bowman is in deep trouble in his bid for a third term in the House of Reprobates. In a shocking new poll obtained exclusively by the Post, Wednesday, Westchester County Executive George Latimer leads Bowman 52 to 35 percent among Democratic primary voters for the 16th Congressional District, which takes in southern Westchester County and parts of northeast Bronx. Among Democrats who voted in the last three of the last four primaries, Latimer's lead grows to a whole 21 percentage points, 56 to 35, according to the survey. And that's bad news for Bowman because people, less people come to primaries. Trust me, I know that. Uh, now, this uh, survey was conducted by veteran Democratic pollster Mark Mellum for the pro-Latimer Democratic majority for Israel. Now, among Democrats who say they know both Latimer and Bowman, 76% of primary electorate say they're going to vote for... <laughs> that's 76 of the electorate. Uh, Latimer's lead grows to another 26 points, uh, 60 to 34. So the people who are the most likely to vote in the Democratic primary, 60 to 34, are going to vote for Latimer, not for Jamal Sparky Bowman. A resurfaced video. Now, Bowman, the 48-year-old, pled guilty last year to one misdemeanor count of falsely pulling a fire alarm in the Cannon office building to delay a vote to avert a partial government shutdown. He should have gone to jail as a convicted felon and locked in D.C. prison without a trial for years on end for interfering with official proceeding because he interrupted, unlike the people who poured in the Capitol building, actually successfully disrupted and prevented a vote. The vote on January 6th actually took place. This vote didn't take place because Sparky Bowman pulled down a fire alarm and got caught and just got charged with a misdemeanor. He's a criminal. He should be criminally prosecuted as a felon for endangering public safety by pulling a fire alarm. It's pretty simple. The soft touch prosecution of this asshat of a legislator in the National House of Representatives. He's in trouble now. He's in trouble. A resurfaced video from November also showed the congressman calling Israel an apartheid state while angrily claiming reports of rapes and child murders during the Hamas October 7th terror attack were a lie. So he's a denier. He's like a Holocaust denier. He denied what happened to Jews, Christians, and Muslims on October 7th. He also defended putting convicted cop killer and fugitive Joanne Chesiman in the Bronx Cornerstone Academy for Social Action's Hall of Honor while he was principal there before his election to the House. He's a thoroughly reprehensible human being who is nothing but race hustling. 
Now, Latimer will vote with every other Democrat, just as Bowman did. The only this is a comment by one of the people who read the post. Uh, he'll vote just as Bowman did. The only difference is rhetorical content and methodology. One wants to slowly create a neo-socialist Bernie topia, and the other endorses destroying nearly every bit of Western culture immediately in order to get there. That would be Bowman, of course. Now, New York City's serious crimes hit levels unseen in two decades last year, even as Mayor Eric Adams claims that crime is down. <laughs> serious crime spiked again last year to levels unseen in nearly two decades, according to internal New York Police Department data obtained by the New York Post. Even as Mayor Eric Adams has repeatedly claimed that crime is down in the Big Apple, the Big Rotten Apple. For the second year in a row, Adams, uh, under Adams' overall crime is on the rise, driven by a historic surge in assaults, nearly 28,000 for the first time in the city's publicly recorded history, according to police department report. The report tracks the tally of seven major felony offenses after the time of arrest to when cases moved to the district attorneys, who decide whether to upgrade, downgrade, or stick with the charge. For instance, a perp who punches someone might be charged with misdemeanor first, but if the victim's condition later worsens, the prosecutor could boost it to a felony. So New York, the Big Apple, is falling apart because of these clowns. Well, the count of major felonies, uh, which include murder, rape, robbery, assault, burglary, grand larceny, and car thefts, is generally used as a benchmark for success from year to year. In recent months, the mayor has been banging the drum about his administration's success in combating crime, proclaiming our strategy is working in his State of the City speech back in January. He touted the year-end 2023 data showing a 0.3% dip in overall major crime, coupled with double-digit decreases in murder, burglary, shootings, compared to his first year in office. Now, I say it over and over again until it resonates. Jobs are up, crime is down, and we're moving in the right direction as we deliver it for our working-class New Yorkers. That's what he said on February 20th. I don't know what world he's living in, but that's not the world that New Yorkers are living in. And uh, that's some of the news for today. By the way, uh, Donald Trump is now up in six, all six of the key swing states in the 2020 election polls. He was trailing Wisconsin. A new poll has come out showing that Donald Trump now has a lead over sneaky, sleepy Joe Biden. Why can I not see the screen very well? It's all dark here. I'm going to have to adjust the screen here somehow. Let's see. Where is the screen adjustment at here? There we go. Oh, there we go. There we go. All right. Now maybe I can see a little bit better. Oh, not really much better. All right. So let's see what we got here. Still can't see very well. All right. So I can't see all the comments. Oh, there we go. Okay. Wow. And it's hard to see here. Okay. All right. All right, so we got uh, Val Cooper. Gosh, I really can't see the light. is bad today. Charles and Onslin's here. And who else we got here? Um, George is here. Myra. Boy, the rain was probably better. I could see better. <laughs> and then, um, is that Sloat Steen Cup? Yeah, Sloat Steen Cup is here. And for some reason, this thing has uh, got me. At, uh, what is that there? Anyway, I don't know what's going on with my YouTube. You guys can see me. You can hear me, hopefully. Anyway, um, yeah, so... Uh, Teresa, yeah, I am really cooking in this car, and the light is terrible. Let me bring spin this thing over here where I can see a little bit better. There we go. Can you guys still see me? I can see a little bit better. It's darker here. Okay. And there's uh, Rainier Dutoy, uh, Lorraine Slabert's back. Hey, welcome to you. Sue Walsh, Teresa, Debbie, good to see you there. Nick Muller, Charles Van Onselin, Allison Johnson. Erica, Nick Muller, where is, hello, Alter Bridge. Try not to engage when I drink, but unfortunately the threshold is broken, says Alter Bridge. Yep, Alan Kotze. <clears throat> and um, who am I missing here? Oh, no, registration from Rama, resonates, will not happen. No, it never happened. Of course, he'll never resign. Ken Aaron says, can't find anything on the amount of bail. Yeah, I didn't see anything on the amount of bail either or the conditions. Yeah, she is just escaping, exactly. Oh, there it is. Alan says 50,000 Rand bail. Okay. She ruined the sand up. Yeah, she did. And I just report on what's going on in sand up in the DRC. It's a mess. Entire ANC doesn't have any integrity. That's true. And granted herself special leave on full pay. Well, that sounds like Zandili Gumeda, who was reappointed. She was fired as the, um, the mayor of Durban, but then appointed to quietly to the provincial legislature for KZN, only for it to be exposed by independent journalists like me and then finally the media. And then she, hey, there's Hendo. All right. Brett is here. Hey, Brett, good to see you there. And uh, oh, from Noah's Ark to hot steamy weather. Must have, it's not actually hot, um, Debbie. It's just the problem is you know, it's a black car. The sun, when it comes out, hits in. It heats the air up in the, in, the, in the car, and so it warms up. So that's the problem. 
It's not actually hot. It's chilly out today. It was one degree above freezing this morning, which is a big change from what it was the past several days. 50,000 mail. I'm not holding my breath. This case would, you know, I wouldn't hold my breath either, Lorraine. Um, Ancy's fought the whole country, brought the whole country to its knees, Erica says. Chris Swanepoel's here. Hey, Chris. He's saying hi to the ladies. Fire for a dodgy wig. Yeah, indeed, a dodgy wig she had. Case been going on for ages. Um, the chickens are only now coming home to roost. The wig was the giveaway. No pun intended. <laughs> yep. Yep. Would my pizza and Akula have to return the wig if she's found guilty in all charges? <laughs> Possibly. Possibly. Yeah. She, yeah. When is Ramaphosa resigning? That's a good question. I'd love to see when that's going to happen. Won't going to happen. Maybe the bear was wearing the wig at the time. <laughs> that's why they couldn't find it. Ek leiste. Leiste Erika Eitzendel. Kanet ni altai sam kletsni. Okay. Thank you, Rainier. When is the deputy president resigning? Good question. Never is the answer. That's correct. My geleerd friend het te veel werk of le by the Svenbad. Oh, he went, he went to the swimming pool. Okay, cool. Svenbad, just like the Schwinbad in German. Yeah. Myra, how's it going? I hope she implicates some of the other comrades. Wouldn't that be nice? Committing crime is a prerequisite to join the ANC. <laughs> ANC have looted South African oblivion, and they don't seem to see anything wrong with that. You know, they think it's perfectly fine. They sit there and delude themselves that they've done something good. She did it. She's corrupt, but she is covering for some higher-up ANC people, says Brett. Hmm. Martin K is here. Welcome, Martin. John, why is Chris wearing a seatbelt? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, it's because if I don't, the damn uh, car goes ding, 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 ding. It won't shut up, so I have to put the seatbelt on. Uh, it's because I had the door open. Maybe now I can take it off. It might not do it anymore. Let's see. Yeah, now it'll do it. Force of habit, you know. I follow the rules, folks. Force of habit. I put that on. Okay, the scientist is here. Too much um, eating can cause hypertension. Yep. Yep. Diabetes is on the rise. Yep. Type 2 diabetes. I've been warning Africans about it for years. Yeah, some states require you to wear a seatbelt even when the car is not in motion. That's true, Brett. I don't believe that's the case in Pennsylvania. It's just a habit. Is the car door open? Yes, it is. Well, you guys are having a lot of fun here. Is he <laughs> bending over? News is rough. Buckle up. Yeah, that's right. That's why I put the seatbelt on because the news is rough. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So what else? I hope this helps. Some laws you said don't understand. <laughs> Time delay tactic. Uh, the incoming president may be ANC cater so she can be given a pardon. Yeah, car ignition was on. I, I, in order to put the window down, I put the car ignition on. You can't just roll the window down. It's a problem with electronics. People are so easily offended. It's ridiculous. I agree with you, Lorraine. That's the whole thing about this curio thing and the claim that was racist. People just need to grow up. There was no racism going on there. Just fools. Lots of fools out there. I'm protecting you on air from the blonde stalking me. What career? They were acting on a, a cashier person. Yeah, exactly. It's a crock, Val. That's an American car. It's got common sense, so no ding ding. <laughs> also, I'm on the wrong side of the car for you, you South Africans and the Brits. <laughs> oh, you guys are funny today. I'm getting sick of this. Nowadays, most people are not racist. Yeah, well, I'm with you, Brett, but yeah, we got to keep calling it out. Good evening, Dylan. Welcome. There you are. And there's uh, Trevor Bush. Welcome to Trevor. And who else we missed here? Honestly, I've never experienced racism in my daily life, but on social media, it's rife. It's crazy. My neighbors are a black couple and their daughters are lovely. Yeah, no doubt, Lorraine. And uh, I have unfortunately experienced racism. I've been a victim of racism on multiple occasions as a child growing up in a housing project um, in a public school in another location. And then as an adult in the Army, um, not from the Army. It's, well, not, not in my units, not my people around me, but from the Army leadership. It's racist policy of promoting people based on skin pigmentation, which um, caused problems. So anyway, but it didn't affect me directly, but it did affect the army. So anyway, yeah. Um, and then, of course, in Africa, frequently a victim of racism because I'm white all over Africa. But that's life. It doesn't bother me. <laughs> no, I didn't have beans for breakfast. I don't. That's a British thing. I don't eat beans for breakfast. That's gross. <laughs> New York City Marathon. Run before you get mugged. Escape from New York. Snake Plissken. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Greed is in charge. It is. Uh, you're right about that, Brian Lawrence. And greed is in charge. 
Should give New York also a Formula One race. <laughs> I don't know about that. All right, what else we got here? Um, don't give someone an idea about Two Oceans Marathon of Comrades. The Two Oceans. That would be good, wouldn't it? That's a good one, Ken. Um, what else you got here? And uh, Hendo shared the Telegram group there. Menage Qua is here. Hey, Menage Qua, what's going on, brother? What you up to, man? Bowman's a Holocaust denier. Really? No, Menage Qua, equivalent of a Holocaust denier. He denied that anyone was raped or murdered uh, by Hamas on October 7th, and he's caught. They've got a recording of it, so that's that's what I'm talking about. Ahoy, Spiker Hood says, are you going to say, yes, I'm in the USA. I'm at uh, in central Pennsylvania. Eric Adams is a joke. Yes, he is. Wow, what a way to measure success, seriously. <laughs> Police must be more Miami Vice and less Scarface. <laughs> Uh, Zandili Gumeda was put in charge of finance of all things. Yeah, no kidding, <laughs> Charles. That's right. There's George. I saw many more black cars where it snows. <laughs> no crime, the NC. Fikile would never lie to it all like that. Yeah, you're right. Fikile is just so honest. <laughs> what about the redheaded one? I'd prefer her, actually. Huh? Who are we talking about there? Beggars can't be choosers. I win the lollipop for getting that guess right. Thanks, guys. The sound is distracting. What sound? Or mad the same races reside in different skin tones sometimes at the same time. <laughs> Menage says, when has the U.S. Army not had racial preferences or promotions? Uh, well, in theory, it's illegal. It violates federal employment and labor laws, and the military has no exception to violate those laws. Um, the U.S. military doesn't have racial quotas, according to the military, but there was a time period when um, field grade officers were denied promotion. Uh, black officers make up, I don't know what the current figure is, but black officers in the U.S. Army made up about 6.5% of the total officer force, uh, but they were 13% of the population at the time that that was true. I don't know the current figures. I know the current figure is 12% of the population is black. It's down from 13% because the uncontrolled mass invasion of our country has reduced the percentage of black Americans, even though the number is at 45 million. So I don't know the current percentage of the military, but we had 18% of our officers that were that were generals were black, but only 6% were, 6.5% were black officers. So basically that meant that um, black officers were 250% better than white officers who were their peers. No, it meant that they were using quotas to promote people to achieve some sort of DEI outcome. Yep. Can't beat bean. No, no thanks, Flesh. That's very much a Brit thing. Do you know that uh, if your name is uh, n natively Andres, your people were Muslims at one point? I had no idea that. That's news to me. Hey, Dusty, how's it going? Greetings from Cape Town. Good to see you there. Car doors open. We were guessing the season, the reason door and window down. Yeah. Oh, that's what the lollipop is for. Okay. All right, so we got everybody. Now I'm caught up on the chat. Let me move this back here. Sorry, I don't want to give you vertigo there, but let me move back up here. All right, so this sounds a little bit better now. I can see for some reason I couldn't see the screen at all. Seems Cape and Pine Town get the heat and the rest of experience winter cold, says Debbie. Okay, beans, beans, that magic fruit. <laughs> no, I'm not going to finish that. Not going to finish that. Anyway, folks, uh, yesterday we uh, left the broadcast a few minutes early so that I could uh, join Ronaldo on Wednesdays with the Colonel. So, uh, look, I have to be in so many places at so many different times. It's impossible for me to satisfy everything. Right now, I somehow have to spend my day at the War College doing consulting. I have to attend a township meeting, and there's one at 4 to 6, another from 7 to 9. I have to um, conduct interviews for a club manager for the VFW. I'm supposed to be at the VFW State Convention in Gettysburg right now. I'm obviously not there. I've paid for a hotel for two nights. So that's going to be fun. So basically tonight I'll drive to Gettysburg and stay overnight and then drive back up to the War College tomorrow and miss much of the conference. Yeah, pretty crazy there if you ask me. But anyway, that's that's what's going on. So um, i got to be in too many places once. And all of that ignores the fact that I actually need to be out campaigning for office. Listen, don't, don't feel bad for me. I'm not whining. I'm not crying. I'm just telling you that I can only be stretched so many directions. I feel like Gumby uh, being pulled this way, being pulled that way. It's very disruptive. And on top of that, I am I need to write an article about South Africa's upcoming election. I want to get it on the War Room, the Army War College's uh, blog, and I'd like to get that up there. Also, maybe get it published elsewhere. 
But I mean, I haven't had time to write that. And I haven't done my taxes, which are due soon. And that's really a big deal. I gotta get the taxes turned in on time. Yep, so wind is howling in Cape Town. Well, that's not a surprise. It's Cape Town. Wind's always blowing there. Yeah, I, you know, I kind of wish that even when you have electric windows, you'd have the ability still to crank them up by hand. But that's just not how cars work. This car, when the battery died on it, because I had a battery die on it, it was here at the War College. And it was cold wintertime, November, a few years back. And um, the car wouldn't even turn over. Wouldn't even, did nothing. And just, and the problem is that you can't engage the transmission unless the power's on. So it was locked in park, and they had to put in a low boy, a trailer, and I had to get the front end realigned when it was over because they jerked it one way, they jerked another way, jerked another way, and oh, geez, what a mess. That's stupid. You ought to be able to push the switch on and put it in neutral so the car can be moved, take the brake off, but couldn't do that. That's really irritating. But I love the car. It's a nice little car. I mean, I never actually had an American-made car before. It's the first time ever. Yeah, it's a Chrysler 200. Yeah, I bought it when I came back from Ethiopia. And the car payment was manageable, but I did over a long period of time. I finally paid it off some time ago. It was good news to pay it off. I was happy about that. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Yeah, so um, you still get manual sticks. Yeah, you gotta. You, it's hard to get a stick shift. This is an automatic. And I'm fine with it, actually. Um, but I do prefer a stick shift. I don't have a stick shift now. I miss that. Um, but it's getting more uncommon to get it. Um, yeah, it's hard to... I prefer a, a standard uh, transmission to an automatic one, yeah. It, you make time to keep us informed, uh, says Nick Muller. Bye, Donkey Colonel. Yeah, no, yeah, you're welcome. This is my lunch. I'm foregoing my lunch so that I can spend time with you guys and share the news and give you analysis. Listen, um, I don't know what's going on in the ANC and why they chose Gnosis Iwe Mapisa Nakula to be a sacrificial lamb. There's so many corruption accused in the ANC that we could just, you know, take the top 200, run down the list, and, you know, and that's the ones we know about. I mean, how many of these people are criminals we don't even know about their activities? That's the scary part with the ANC. So many people probably are criminals. We just don't know about it when you think about it. Um, we have criminals here in the States. Uh, Jamal Bowman's one of them. Um, yep. A man who got off lightly for which, under the Democratic Party standards, he should be in prison forever. I mean... The man interfered with official proceeding. Apparently, that's the greatest sin in the U.S. government when you interfere with an official proceeding and disrupt it. So that gets you um, put into prison without a criminal charge, without due process, without a speedy trial by your peers so that you can be held as a political prisoner. While humanitarian um, groups and Human Rights Watch, the Amnesty International, the United Nations Commissioner on Human Rights and the American Criminal Liberties Union and the Southern Poverty Law Center are all completely silent on the situation. They have no comment, no comment whatsoever on the inhumane, illegal, unconstitutional treatment of the January 6th accused. Never mind whether they committed a crime or not. People cannot be held indefinitely in prison as American citizens in the United States. They can't in Russia. They can be held in China indefinitely, but you can't be held indefinitely in the United States. And these same groups... You, Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International, and the United Nations High Commission on this issue all take exception to Guantanamo Bay. Yeah, it's like being a terrorist, exactly. You seem to lose any rights you should have. Exactly. Well, some of the people like to term those people, call those people that were actually involved in that as terrorists, but there was no terror. There was no attempt to terrorize anybody there. If anything, um, they're guilty of trespassing. Some are guilty of criminal damage. Um, and that's about it. That's about it. But those accused of trespass or interfering with official proceeding should be exonerated if they went in the building because they were invited in by law enforcement, which is what happened to many of those people. Um, this is it's a shambles. It's a disgrace. It's an absolute abuse of authority. And real criminals walk the streets and get away with their crimes every day. New York with no bail for violent crimes. Philadelphia, Larry Krasner releasing rapists and murderers back into the same neighborhoods where they go back some cases in the same day and commit the exact same crimes that they were arrested for earlier that day. The country is absolutely falling apart because of an unwillingness of leftist district attorneys and prosecutors in this country to uphold the rule of law. To answer your question, the speaker was exposed at the wrong time. Had this been last year, not two months from election, it would have been a different story. Yeah, I got your point there, John, but um, I don't know if that's the case because we've known about her and this so-called corruption now for about two or three years. So 
to you know to address um, Nosaziwe's point, why now? Well, the clouds are coming back in with the rain. Why now? Why? 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 What? What's the motivation for this? This? This revelation now? It wasn't there before. I mean, it's a fair question. I think it's a fair question. It's a political prosecution, says Gus. Well, she's, if she's committed crimes, maybe she's being targeted for political reasons. But why would the ANC target its own person? Nobody cares who she is. You know, she's she's a nobody. She's accomplished zero in her entire life. So why why? Is she sacrificial lamb? Is that what it is? Is the ANC going to now use to say, we're tough on crime, we're tough on corruption, we're tough on graft, and we got rid of the hypertensive, um, you know, uh, former Speaker of the House to prove that we are. I mean, is that the purpose behind it? I mean, is that what's really going on? I mean, it doesn't make any sense, folks. I mean, look, one thing I know it's not, it's not an equal application of the law. It's not the legal system in South Africa going after a criminal and prosecuting them. I'll comment. Yeah, oh no, you're right, because that yeah, that is for the January sixth. But well, this might be political too. We don't know. But I mean, it's definitely not because the system is working that she's been charged with a crime and she had to turn herself in the police station. Ain't she like throwing their members under the bus when it suits them? Yeah. Yeah, no, I think you're right about that. Who was it? Allison? Who was that? That was Lorraine. Lorraine. Yeah, um, yeah, they do like to throw their members under the bus, and it's time to throw Ace Magashule, Zuelen Kizi, Zandili Gumeda, Sir Ramaposa, Fakili Mabula, all under the bus. <laughs> Our best coal gets exported to China. Yeah. Well, not only that, Erica, what has also happened is that the corrupt criminal syndicates that members of ESCOM were in cahoots with sell painted rocks mixed in with some poor quality bituminous coal, which they sell and they put into the bins, and you can't burn rocks. Not unless you're the surface of the sun or the interior of the planet. Doesn't work. So, you can't burn rocks, and that's another problem. So yes, I didn't know South Africa had all that much anthracite. The largest deposit of anthracite on the planet, historically, was right here in Pennsylvania, in Scranton, in Lackawanna County, where I lived as a kid. Anthracite capital of the world. Serious hard coal. And that's a burn hard and hot. Yep. I remember that. So with bituminous coal, it burns dirtier and it's, you know, it's it's not as clean burning or efficient. Doesn't release the same amount of energy. But anthracite is the hard stuff. It burns really good stuff. Yep. How many low hanging fruit are now scared? Evil eats itself. Well, I hope so. I hope it eats itself. I hate evil. I hate people who are miscreants and misbehave. It's very frustrating. Anyway, so yeah. Oh, by the way, last night, folks, I um, went back out on the campaign trail. I didn't have a lot of time, but I did hit a number of houses, and I finished up one neighborhood. And this is what I have to say. I met more people yesterday, and I knocked on the door. These people have been living in their house for over 20-some years, and they listened. They, I talked to them, and they said they, you know, I got the impression they wanted to vote for me. Pretty much said that. But they thanked me, and I said, well, you're welcome. I said, no, no, no one's ever come here. Not a single political candidate from any political party has ever come on the street and asked for our vote. And I said, well, it's a challenge. You know, we're 65,000 residents and, you know, it's difficult to get out and see everybody. But I try to make an effort and I'm doing my best to get out and see as many people as possible. So they're really grateful for that. And that was pretty much the case in that entire neighborhood. Yep. And so for my opponents, if you're doing opposition research and you're watching this program, that community is located in Boiling Springs. <laughs> no, it's not. Boiling Springs is outside my congressional district, folks. I just try to throw them off. Yeah. No, but people are really grateful. You know, you take the time to go visit and talk to them. It's, uh, it's you know, it's it's part of what you got to do. But, I mean, that's just part of who I am. You guys know that. Um, those of you who've been with the program for a long time, those of you who show up at the meet and greets. Hey, Debbie, you still there? What a great meet and greet we had. The first one ever. The first official meet and greet was at our Tambo, Emperor's Palace. Remember that? At the Met Court. Piermont Met Court. Yeah, Debbie. That was awesome. And it just set the tone for all the meet greets that came after that. I'll never, ever forget it. I got a Springbok jersey that night, uh, among other things. And I got that nice um, sign that was made. It was so cool. Really, and it really set the tone for the entire, the entire trip, that first trip to South Africa. Yep. I think next time I should probably get a sign made for the election. So um, I'll have to reach out and, you know, I guess I'll pay for it, but I'm going to have to reach out and get a sign made, you know, for the election, I think. Nobody chatting here? Oh, no. Oh, the chat stopped. Okay. Anthracite is what made me notice Indian state capture in the country. Okay. 
Michael Scott. What's that? My chat wasn't going anywhere. Uh, KZN is full of coal mines. Okay. Tells you someone else is actually pulling their political strings like many. Yep, gotcha. 30 Rand per 40 kilogram bag. It was before the cockroaches. <laughs> Sounds like old fashioned pounding the pavement is the key for you to get ahead of your opponents. Well, that's part of an Ajaqua, but also it's um, uh, making contact with people who are influential to convince people whom to vote for. Now, that's a key as well. So uh, the bottom line is that she has no support base that could influence the NC's decision. No one is complaining about what is going on, not even the Women's League. Good point there. John Jarvis, the NC Women's League, is not saying anything. She's a woman. If, if it was the DA and they were doing this to DA member, the ANC's Women's League would call the DA misogynist. Guaranteed. Best ever at Emperor's Palace was fabulous. And the hooligan hat you brought over, everyone was watching your trip. Oh, yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, for the weather hooligan. He, and, and it got stolen. You know, his hat got stolen. Yeah. Newcastle area, Northern Free State coal mining. Yep. Okay. Small fire, energy, 2,000 watts of electricity. Definitely know for next time to do a more travel friendly manner. Yeah, no, no. I mean, but hey, it was a great thing. It's fantastic. Um, yeah, because I couldn't, I couldn't bring the case back because I was gonna have to pay like two hundred and fifty dollars or four hundred dollars for it. So I had to cut it out. But I have the banner. It's so cool. I ought to dig it out and just you know hang it from the wall behind my thing. That was that was epic. And that was the first ever meet and greet. The first ever. Now I technically met with Paulie. Uh, in Cape Town, also with the Petsu Film Crew. But the Petsu Film Crew and I were doing work, and Paul, it was just kind of an impromptu thing. But the first formal meet and greet was at Met Court, the Piermont Met Court, which has really gone downhill, by the way, folks. Still decent, but it used to be incredible. It used to be an impeccable place. Do you have um, a cassia tree on your. I don't even know what that tree is now. You mean acacia tree? No, we don't have acacia trees. Born in Skykel City, anthracite coal is king, says Mike. Okay. Yeah, anthracite is awesome. What's the best barbecue wood there is? Um, I think that, um, oh, geez, you're drawing a blank on me right now. I know the tree. Oh, it's in, it's, um, oh, in Arizona. Arizona. What is that tree? Oh, gosh, that's incredible. It's got a very specific smell to it. It's fantastic for uh, barbecue or braai. Oh, gosh, bless it. What is that tree I'm thinking of now? I can't, can't, I can't draw a blank here. Ah, yeah. Anyway. But there's a very, really good tree out there in, in uh, Arizona. Great for um, barbecuing or for doing a braai. Really incredible stuff. Anyway. Uh, mesquite. Thank you, Menage Qua. Mesquite. That's what I'm thinking of. Mesquite is fantastic. Boy, I used to barbecue with mesquite all the time in Arizona. Woohoo! That's some good stuff, man. That puts some flavor on your burgers there. And it smells good. Mesquite. Yep. Good stuff. Thank you, Menage Qua. That's what I was looking for. Not maple. Maple wood's good for... For barbecue, that's also good. Um, hickory is good. Uh, but mesquite and maple have distinct smells, and they really make a difference. Yep. Mesquite. And it, and uh, Menage Qua spelled it correctly. Thank you for that, Menage Qua. Yep. Boy, so much crap in my head sometimes. I can't access all at once. Anyway. All right, folks. Uh, audience is starting to drop off. It's nearly an hour into this. Um, I need to get back to my multitude of activities. And, I, yeah, I'm hungry, too. I haven't eaten, so... I'm going to go head off. Be sure to hit the like button. 57 likes, 47 people here. And thank you all for your presence. Um, I'm not sure about rugby this weekend. It's a Champions Cup again. I'm going to look at the schedule and see if I can't do a game. But I've got commitments. Uh, the election is now just 14 days, or no, 19 days away, I should say. So, no, that's Mescal. Mescal is what you're talking about, Charles. Mescal is not mesquite. Mescal is very different. <laughs> anyway, all right, y'all take care. Thanks a lot and appreciate being here. Cheers. Oh, yeah. Check it out. Look out. Mesquite wood. It's very good. All right. Bye. See you later, guys. Thanks a lot.